Lofting. We saw Nadal adopt a similar sort of return position when he played Del Potro. I mean, he is literally 10, 12 feet behind the baseline. I mean, look at that. Trying to give himself as much time to catch up to these big serves. He's closer to the backstop than he is to the baseline. That's brilliant. 132 miles an hour on that serve for Anderson, known as one of the bigger servers. In fact, he has some of the top five fastest serves in this entire tournament. Fastest serve was 141 miles an hour, by the way. Kevin's fastest serve in the tournament, 137. That last one, 135. Neville and Kelsey, coach and wife. I'll be nervous early on until this uh, match settles down. things that's been much discussed about Kevin Anderson is work on the mental side of the game giving himself pep talks on the court yep he's been working with a sports psychologist got to give Neville a lot of credit as well he's worked hard at making him more positive getting himself more motivated another smoke serve at 136 40, 30. Kevin talked about learning how to not be so hard on himself and get so down if something doesn't go right. Stay positive. Keep keep it keep the game flowing in his mind. see the defensive skills of Nadal on that backhand side it's incredible so important that pattern of play to go really hard to Nadal's forehand I think doesn't defend as well off that wing so we'll see how much Kevin employs that tactic throughout this match First of the fist pumps for Kevin Anderson and a chance to get a service hold here to start this match. You feel like of the two players, he'll be the one that needs to settle into the match a little more quickly. Yeah, you're exactly right. Rafa's been here and done it on numerous occasions. So Kevin Anderson gets the service hold. A couple of aces in that first game. And now they will change ends. And the world number one will go on the serve. Second all-time in Grand Slam titles and finals. 15 Grand Slam championships, 23 Grand Slam finals. He has been there. He has done this. Okay, of course, and he'll be drawing on that experience. Alan. Kevin, just the first time he has been at the tail end of the majors. Played a couple of finals. First one way back in 2008. On three titles. Nothing as big as this, not even close. Now remember, while Rafa is number one in returns of first serves win percentage in this tournament, Kevin is number two. See what success he has against the lefty serve.
Already we see the effect of that particular shot. Nadal's so good at dominating the play out of his backhand corner. He uses the, the inside out forehand so well when he couples it with the inside in. Forces you to cover so much court. Bobby, just curious, this is the first left-handed player that Kevin Anderson has faced in the tournament. All of his six opponents so far have been right-handed. How much of an adjustment is that? Definitely. I have to fine-tune your shot selection, perhaps. And, of course, just get used to the spin. Warmed up with a, a young lefty today. So already in the warm-up, trying to take care of details get used to those nuances. So Rafa Nadal able to win that game with all second serves. And a service hold for one apiece. One game one game for Just a magnificent day here at this U.S. Open. Of course, we've had to use the roof here at Arthur Ashe Stadium a few times during yep. the two weeks, but not on championship weekend. It is spectacular. The weather set fair. This is weather like you'd find in early October. Yeah. Again, I like the patterns of play there from Anderson. I think another thing to follow as the match goes on is longer rallies versus short rallies. Oh, yes. We know whose hands those are going to play into when they start to get lengthy. Anderson's presence in this final came from that half of the draw where Andy Murray withdrew just before the start of the tournament and things were shuffled around. It's been a topic of conversation for the last two weeks about opportunity. Who might get their first shot? Mm -hmm. And the answer was Anderson who played his way through those 64 players. Mm -hmm. 
So double fault for Anderson, his first of the match. Well, Anderson comes in, and you look at the numbers in the draw sheet, he's 28th ranked in the world. This was a guy who was in the top 10 just two years ago in October of 15 before a series of injuries slowed him down. Yeah, he's had a number of injuries to deal with. And that was a tough part right off the back of getting to that career high ranking. Hip, shoulder, ankle. Of course, it didn't play from its hell end of last year till Memphis this year, which is in February. Missed the Australian Open. And that hip injury was a fairly serious one. There was a long discussion about surgery or no. They ended up going no, but the rehab process was extremely grueling. That one. Nice to win one of those long rallies yeah. early on in the match, Alan, but maybe Andy Murray needs to see the same guy, Kevin Saw. Yeah. Of course, uh, Murray struggling with hip problems, uh, been well documented. That's what's kept him out uh, of the sports since Wimbledon. We saw him struggle there. that Nadal backhand finding the tight spaces on the court you can see how effective Nadal is short and central even to his backhand you're looking for trouble and he is so good at exploiting Kevin's movement out wide in the world and he is the master of that shot whether it's a backhand chip nice and high down the line it's over your backhand side you don't really want to hit it because you can't put a lot on it so you decide to leave it and placed with the geometric precision this was sets up a Nadal break point When you can tip the net cord twice and get the ball in play both times and win the point, maybe it makes you smile a little bit. Yeah. Maybe it's my day. Longest rally of the match. And a break point save for Kevin Anderson. Maybe a lady luck. Multicolored at the moment. It's a Rainbow Nation colors. in the play he's just got to remember there that because he's so far up the court doesn't need to hit the ball that hard it's all about spin control so another break point opportunity for Nadal and Anderson fighting to hold his serve here pretty early in this first set Save. 
Williams quick to move up to the short ball. Before this match started, through six matches in the tournament, Anderson had only yielded 22 break point opportunities to his opponent. He saved 17 of them. He only lost five. He saved two for two in this match so far. We'll get our first chase review of the match to see if that serve was good as called or not. Rafa having a look, but it's right on the line. <laughs> Rafa's looking at a ball mark. Perhaps disagreeing with the technology, but that's not going to get him anything. That's, that's strange. The only reason he, he might not have seen it, because that ball was plumb on the line. It wouldn't have left much of a mark, so I don't know if that's a, an yeah. existing mark already, Alan. Yeah. third game of the match both these guys super fit Anderson will have no problem playing long neither will this guy of course <laughs> that we know that's what he does that's grinds you down perfect placement on the serve advantage Anderson have to think back to the other hard court major final that Adele played in earlier this year. Remember he beat uh, Zverev down under in four hours and five minutes. Dimitrov four hours fifty six minutes. And that was all just to get into that epic final with Roger Federer. Mm -hmm. Tough time for the second double fault of the match for Anderson. And of course, the longer he keeps serving, the more looks Nadal gets at the serve, the more nuances he starts to pick up. from Anderson. Anderson. I mean, he is doing all the bullying here. Power angle of note. Did you see the hop that ball took from the spin off of Nadal's racket when it landed in front of Anderson? Yep, it did. It was just a little of balance, wasn't he? Just shows you how fine-tuned these guys are with their movement. Ball just got away from Anderson. A little too far. And you make the error. Kevin Anderson's a very tall guy when he comes into the net with that wingspan and that height. It's something that you have to account for when you're trying to pass him. Six foot eight. 
Could have done with a bit of that. <laughs> Saves two break points and saves his serve. On serve between Kevin Anderson and Rafael Nadal in the championship match of the U.S. Open. And as tough as that game was, Alan, certainly help him just to settle in. And especially given the fact that he was able to hold Absolutely. And, and just to give you an idea of how much serving Kevin's already done, he's played 26 points on serve. Rafa, just five. That's not a good sign for Anderson. When you're a big server, the last thing you want to see is that ball coming back. Even if you win the point, you want freebies, you want aces, you want unreturnables. You want to get out of points. Yeah, I definitely agree with you, um, Luke. But I do think it's so important for him to settle down. And uh, sometimes when you hit a lot of balls and you're involved in those kind of rallies, that helps too. I think as the match gets on, I couldn't agree with you more. Kevin doesn't want to go through games like uh, what he's just been through now. But just early on, I'm speaking about, I think that long game's probably helped him. Well, certainly... Sorry wasn't ideal to throw in the double fault when he had the advantage but he did get the save and fought off the two break points and that is the kick critical thing three games into this men's singles championship in Arthur Ashe Stadium at the US Open Kevin Anderson with a hard fought hold of serve some of the famous faces in the crowd yeah Christy Brinkley Vera Wang I saw on the left and right of your screen respectively Everyone knows Bill Gates, big tennis fan. We see him in Indian Wells every year. in the business moving his opponents around the court I know he's got the power but he's also got the guile Stefan Edberg front right of course sitting behind him one of our co-commentators and the Wimbledon champion Virginia Wade hesitated to go to the net on some of these rallies already. Very quick service hold to love for Rafael Nadal. And we are even at two games apiece in this first set of our championship match. And this will be a barometer of his confidence when he starts to use that forehand down the line. Early on in the rally, you better watch out.
Backhand again with the winner. Quick question for Luke Jensen, who's caught that Luke, I was just wondering, is it still breezy down there? And if so, which way is it blowing? Of course, our camera one angle is behind Nadal. It actually has calmed down, and one of the reasons for it, they shut the doors at ground level. The entrance to the players' lounge and locker rooms, that shut down, my sign is shut down. And they did that right at the opening ball, the first point. So before that, during the warm-up, that was that breeze I was feeling where all the atmosphere is kind of swirling around a little bit, but it's shut down. It's perfect right now. Speaking of perfect right now, how about that volley? Yeah. That's right out of the Neville Godwin School of Tennis. Had some great hands on him, did Nifty. No, oh, left too much meat on the bone. And Rafa made him pay. 30 only. Yeah, not getting enough angle, and you're so right. You give this guy a half decent look, and you're in trouble. He's done well to make the adjustment there. The ball was close to his body. That backhand again. Oh. Defensive skills of Nadal initially, <laughs> though, simply incredible. And then Kevin is lacing those backhands. It's interesting numbers there on second serves one because Rafa's not landing very many of his first serves in. Yep. But when he's getting an opportunity on Anderson's second serve, he's cashing in. Big time. Here comes another second serve with a break point at stake. Oh, that's cheap by Nadal's high standards. Third break point that Anderson has saved in the match. Of course, the scores are identical. Yep. Anderson's played 22 points on his serve. Nadal, just nine. Oh. Of course, that's the beauty of our scoring system. 32, excuse yeah, me, 32. 30, 32 for Anderson. 32 yeah. for get a chase review as Kevin Anderson asks to have a look at that serve. Anderson has two challenges remaining. Maybe more of a I need a minute to regroup yep. challenge than anything. Now Rafa Nadal will challenge that serve that was called in. See what Chase Review says on this one. Said it was a line licker. So the ace after the double fault to give up being even. The ace gets him back to even.
mentioned before, Kevin has been very good in the tournament at saving break points. But that first serve percentage is slipping a little bit. That's a lovely strike, as pure as it gets. Will be challenged by Nadal. Chase review coming here to see if that ball caught the paint or not. Did not. Did not. Work left to do. Full of aces for Anderson. can tell me now he needs these games every game on his serve it's gone the deuce he needs easy outs oh yeah but I'm just thinking early on in the match because I was initially thinking hit some balls get the feel of it but, uh, you're 100% right needs to start holding serve and holding serve quickly he's uh, up to 38 points played on his deal now I mean that shirt is already soaked through and I mean, we're in the fifth game of the first set mm -hmm. Neville Godwin said the tactics would be very simple. No, oh, nice. missed it. Tried to cut it tight to the net and out the side door. Got a little too much on it. Robert, did Neville say anything to give you a hint on the tactics outside of just general? No, just the general stuff. He would try and mix it up and perhaps serve and volley a little more. We've seen that, I think, already, Luke, just because Rafa stands so deep. So just to try and give him a, a different look every now and then. If you've highlight, highlighted something, I think is very important. When you get that short ball or that mid court ball, Anderson kind of goes big and deep to the Nadal forehand because he does not defend on that side, on the backhand because he's right-handed dominant. Mm -hmm. That Chase. right hand really helps him defend. Chase review shows the ball was in. So Nadal down to just one challenge remaining for the rest of this set. An extremely hard fought hold of serve. For Kevin Anderson, we're on serve in the first set of the championship match in New York. Anderson leads three games to two for seven. Okay, Luke, you're a Kevin psychologist now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one. I've heard a lot of things. What okay. You, how are you putting a positive spin on the opening uh, three service games? Oh, unbelievable. Listen, we got out of them. Yes. We won them. <laughs> That's when it matters. So... I want to see a smarter Kevin Anderson approach this. I, I like the mix-up with the serve and volley, but he's got to take care of business. I don't believe he has a real plan when he gets that ball in the middle of the court. And the, if there is a plan, it just seems like he's defaulting to the backhand of the down, yeah. and that's really dangerous. The, the last point he just played, the one he just played was perfect. Get that short ball, rip it to the Nadal forehand, make him retrieve over there. Then he's stuck on that side of the court. And again, that forehand is such 
It's beautiful when he's dictating, but for Nadal, when he's defending, it's too wristy and too big on the backswing, where the backhand's so compact, and that's where Nadal comes up with those great passing shots. Well, it's one of the mysteries of the game is can the player make the adjustments? Especially with the weight of the circumstances surrounding him. Time. On serve in the first set of the championship match at the U.S. Open. Kevin Anderson working very hard to hold his serve. Rafael Nadal struggling to land his first serve in play, but finding easier holds of serve even with his second than Anderson has so far. When you look at the tournament so far for Rafael Nadal, the three sets that he's lost and the fourth that he almost did were all the first set of a match. Yep. Haven't seen him be off the mark at all tonight. He was settled into this one, it looked like to me, right from the start. Yeah, this is a big opportunity for Anderson, I think. The he first set's going to be crucial because once he does settle down, Nadal's in trouble. I guess Nadal fans might argue, well, Alan's first serve percentage is not great. He hasn't converted on the four break points that he's already had a look at. So Nadal's still trying to find his feet somewhat. Yeah, nice urgency from Anderson. It's important to try and take time away from Nadal. And as Luke highlighted, there's the power to the forehand, and then take that one out the air. Don't let it bounce. Don't give Nadal time to be able to chase down the next shot. Take it out the air. of those backhands now that Kevin has sailed long. Yeah, especially that one down the line, isn't it? Yep. Of course, you've got to remember, the court is so much shorter there when you're so far inside the baseline. So again, it's not about pace that shot, it's more about spin control. off that first serve made sure that he made it and I think he's caught to Anderson out there just 112 miles an hour Anderson a little early on the shot service hold for Nadal three apiece in this first set three games on for set Look at this magnificent crowd that also seem to be settling into the match some, if you will. Of course, Nadal will have a great 
deal of support from this crowd. And uh, if he gets on a roll, this building will rock very loudly. Tiger Woods in the house. Yep. Saw him at uh, Nadal's previous match against Juan Martin Del Potro. And you're exactly right. I mean, the first thing that Kevin had to deal with was the response uh, for when Nadal walked out on center court at the start of the match. few opportunities and that backhand has just been a little off the mark when he's been up close to the net. Yeah, Del keeping it nice and tidy in the unforced errors department and right. prides himself on making very few errors. Probably the greatest percentage player we've ever had in our sport. All just falling out of Anderson's pocket there. So the first one is a let. Yep. The next one becomes a problem. Does. Oh. You, you lose the point thereafter. The umpire just confirming that to him. Jake Garner. Tallahassee, Florida. Good hands at the net. And of course, what about what happens if the racket falls out of your hand midpoint? Not sure if you know that rule. That's an interesting one. Well, Do you, you lose the point? You can't play the ball with your feet. But if you can pick it up. <laughs> That's a different sport. Yeah, you don't replay the point, folks, yeah. because it's considered uh, a hindrance to yourself, not your opponent. So the point just carries on. <laughs> I can't honestly I say that I've ever seen that in a match. No, it happens. Players will die for a shot. They'll fall over. The racket's down. They'll have to pick it up. Sometimes they can carry on. Sometimes they just don't have enough time to grab the racket. And it's the same if your shoe came off. We had it this week. One of the players, mid-rally, shoe came off. Keep going. Keep going. Beautiful. That's exactly what Luke's talking about. 30 to 10. How did you like that, Luke? Again, where he's directing that offensive ball is so important in this matchup because if it doesn't go there, the doubt just defends quickly and then with good precision on that two-hand back end because he's actually a right-hander. Yep. That plays left-handed because he has a dominant hand up on the grip. And he doesn't miss many returns when he's climbing the ladder like that. It's mainly on the forehand. The forehand is, is the one that gets all the, the highlights and the big shots. It's only offensively when Nadal is ripping that back. And even on the return of serve, Nadal more proficient at getting that backhand low to a person's feet. Forehand has got much more shape on it. It's a higher over the net. But he needs time. 130 miles an hour didn't give Nadal much time. Of course, uh, he's known about Rafa. First really saw him up close and personal when he was 11. He was telling me when he was 14, he was already almost taking sets off him. So another Anderson service game that's going to go to Deuce. Carlos Moya with some good stories about the early years with Nadal. He knew what was coming. He said he was almost taking sets of him when he was 14. Of course, the first time they played in Hamburg when Nadal was 16, he lost to him. 
Robert, you said he lost to him. Moya lost to him when he was number one in the world. And Rafa was 13 in practice. <laughs> Again. It certainly wasn't me. When they're at Deuce, and Anderson tossed a double fault. He's managed to save them so far. All four break point opportunities that Nadal has, Anderson has saved. But you can't keep giving the world number one break opportunities and expect he's not going to cash one in. Service break to Rafael Nadal, and he grabs the advantage in this first set. He'll serve at 4-3 over Kevin Anderson. Nadal leads four games to three, first set. He just kind of felt like that there was a little bit of a tightrope being walked there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one slip, and now you're playing from behind against Nadal. Go back and look what happened in that game. A couple of the, the first balls that Anderson had off to the serve. Well, he went straight to Nadal's backhand with the first shot. And, uh, I think he should have gone to the forehand with the first drive. This hindsight is 2020. Yeah, and and easy to see from the higher view yes then when you're standing there running back and forth facing that shot coming at you from across the net right absolutely those are the things that are so easy to figure out on tape the day after but you don't have till the day after to look at the tape and figure it out this is the finals of the u.s open you gotta get it done so now kevin anderson playing Ten. from behind Seats quickly, please. Thank you. Ready for play. Thank you. The first players, crack for now. on either player's side. As Anderson gives up a break of serve, and Rafael Nadal, Nadal now here to serve at 4-3 to try and hold serve and make it 5-3 in this opening set. Some of the folks uh, up and about during the changeover. So now can Nadal get a consolidation of this service break and put himself one game away from the first set. He's got a good start on it. Yeah, of course, some new balls in his hand, Alan. So those things will uh, zip through the air a little quicker, skid more, just like that sliding serve did there. touch 15 only. don't see this too often from Kevin the only combination of shots being aggressive and then showing some decent finesse and risky there a little too short you catch the net a little too long Rafa can get it but perfectly executed
Dodd's all got Anderson on the run there. Took away some space. And now sets himself up with a game point. To try and have a 5-3 lead in this first set. Three Nadal. And he will go for some new hardware. Nadal, one of those guys who will change rackets after one game of serving with the new balls. So for Kevin Anderson now. A must-hold service game to try and keep this first set going. Certainly all of his service games have not come easy. The ones that he's held and the one he was broken. On the return. That's one of the better second serve returns of his forehand side. Like we've seen this afternoon from the doll. Anderson looked like he got caught leaning a little bit there too. He's done well to make the volley. That one coming off the net cord, but Nadal is quick as a flash. Just touches the tape. No chance for Anderson. First serve percentage has dropped off a little bit for Kevin, and Nadal is winning the majority of points on Anderson's second serve. Yeah. Seventy percent of them, to be precise. So there's a first serve in and a point win for Kevin Anderson. We we're talking about his his hip injury. It was a labrum. We hear about that a lot where shoulders are concerned, but uh, a hip labrum kept him from playing in Australia. First ball, it's got to go to the forehand if it's short and central, more often than not. Kevin talked about his rehab after ruling out surgery as a last resort only. Said um, he worked several hours a day over almost two months to get it going, and even more rehab after that. It's a long road back, but says he feels great, he's in good shape. And his form over the summer has certainly showed it. <laughs> oh. Great shot. I mean, backhand skills are simply jaw-dropping. 
this ball, so it's behind him. But he just draws it cross court again, so strong with the top hand. That's his right hand. How often have we said that? Second serve, and Nadal wins the point, and now has a chance to break again and take the first set. The two-time U.S. Open champ has won the first set in his attempt to get a third. Nadal 6-3 in 58 minutes. Well, he's keeping that forehand down the line on the back burner until it really mattered. Me, that's opening set. Just too many unforced errors from Anderson. 23 un unforced errors. Of course, 18 winners, uh, minus five in that category. But of course, look at Nadal doing what he does best, just making a lot of balls, giving you absolutely nothing. Plus three in that uh, winners to unforced errors uh, department. Winning all the points when he came forward. Kevin's trying to come in, but uh, on too many occasions, coming in on the wrong ball, coming into. Nadal's backhand a little too often and normally so effective at defending his second serve. Nadal hasn't allowed Anderson that luxury today and coupled with that, he's been exemplary on his. Luke, got a thought on what the difference is what between them? Opportunities all over the place for Nadal throughout that set, trying to break. But for Kevin Anderson, thinking about it, he had one window. And he was up 3-2 on serve, 15-30. And remember that high backhand? He went down the line and kind of missed it, didn't get his feet set. And we talked about it. He wins that point, 15-40. Maybe this is a whole new paint job. But that's the mindset. If I'm Kevin Anderson, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm still in this. Like, I just have to clean up my service games and then go for a little bit more strategically with that short ball. I'm right there. This could have been a lot worse than 6-3, but Anderson's able to kind of navigate through some of those troubled walks. Well, for sure, Anderson's got to get the first service percentage up. Rafael Nadal winning the first set over Kevin Anderson. Two breaks of serve late in the set and now has a one set to none lead in pursuit of his third championship in this U.S. Open and his second Grand Slam title of this year. Nadal winning the French Open in May and now has the momentum in his corner as we begin this second set.
talked about at the start of the match how important it was for Anderson to settle into the situation. Now here he is down a set to Nadal. How important are these first couple of games of this second set? Very important. We've seen Nadal loosen up a lot. <laughs> After the first set in all his matches. Even the ones where he lost the first set, Ellen. Beautifully done. Now for Anderson, he lost the first set of the semifinal against Pablo Carrera Busta, but came back to win three straight. It was 4 6, 7 5, 6 3, 6 4 was the score line. again Kevin coming into the back here and he's got a low volley and then he's in trouble so exactly as Luke was suggesting just uh, needs to adjust the shot selection especially on that approach Nadal has not lost a point yet when he's come forward eight for eight and net points one and a very quick service hold to start this second set for Rafael Nadal and they'll change ends with Anderson now needing to get it going a little bit. Here's the guy that served more aces than anybody else in the tournament by a pretty good margin. And he has six in the match today, but he could use more. He needs to, to find a way to have shorter service games. Yeah, and it's not even so much the aces, Alan, as, you know, the end returns and the effectiveness on that first serve. You know, Kevin's First serve points one normally in uh, the low to mid 80s. Today, uh, the match thus far it's at what is it? 66. 66 percent on our screen there. Yeah, oh, so it's way below what the average has been in the tournament thus far. Now, part of that's him, yes, but part of that is that man. Yep. Standing across the net, the best in the tournament, and returning first serves and winning those points. It's better. First ball again going to the forehand. Paying dividends. Beautiful, it's magnificent. One of the things that was missing at the start of the match the other night against Del Potro. You said uh, we know Rafa was feeling confident when he started to go for that forehand down the line. And when did he start doing it in the Del Potro match? Second set. Early stages of it. Kevin Anderson, the first South African in the U.S. Open final in the Open era. Cliff Drysdale, 1965, in what was then the U.S. Championships, was the last to play in the final. Kevin saying he hopes that the attention that this is gathering in his home country just inspires more kids to play tennis. Nice, Chris. Drysdale, how he got to the event back in 65. He said he took the train from the city. <laughs> <laughs> None of the official cars picking you up at the hotel and yep. <laughs> or helicopters. Yeah. It's about 200 official cars they have for the event now. 
beautiful Mercedes Benz machines. They're all over the city. And a good service hold for Kevin Anderson for a one apiece spot in this second set. Quick bit of trivia, Luke. Do you remember who the last South African finalist was at a major? Oh, that's Kevin Curran. That's right. 85 Wimbledon played Boris Becker. Well, actually, there's a twist to the answer to that question. Because in 85, Kevin was uh, Kevin was representing the U.S. Yeah, it was 84 at the Australian Open. Of course, the last man to win was that man on our screen right now, Johan Crick. Of course, he won back-to-back -back Aussie Opens. Yeah. 81 and 82. Uh, Johan, of course, uh, lives in Florida now. The Pongola boy. But Luke, I'm going to give it to you anyway because of the new one. What is it? What is it? I get a trip down to the what is it? The Palm Beach Gardens Resort and Spa or something? <laughs> you guys do something? <laughs> no. still winning 90% of the points in this match on his second serve. I know this is a first serve, but that's just a number that just stands out. <laughs> and 75% of the points on his first serve, by the way, too. weather is so beautiful here in New York City today but our thoughts are with everyone who might be watching or listening down in Florida as uh, Hurricane Irma comes through uh, I have a home in Florida many mm -hmm. friends and family there Kevin of course. <laughs> he's not far from me yep and, nice uh, our thoughts with everyone that are uh, dealing with the power of Mother Nature Some bruising shots. That's how good it's got to be. Okay, Johan appreciating the quality of the ball striking. He was an athlete in the mold of Nadal when it came to movement. That was Creek. As many regard him as a, one of the best athletes of his generation. Three strikes to the corners on that point for yeah. Anderson. That's how good it's got to be. Yeah. Just sticking with the default pattern of play. Slider down the middle. It's caught Kevin out a lot today. couple service holds to love in that first set. He had to work a little harder for that one. But Nadal still, Nadal holds. holds. 2 1 in the second. What 
you make of age as a conversation? Both of these players in their 30s, uh, both 31 years old. It's been uh, not a frequent thing to see both players in the final of a Grand Slam in their 30s. In fact, it's just the seventh time in the Open era yep. that both players in a Grand Slam final have been 30 or over. And this is the first time since 2002 here at the U.S. Open when both finalists have been over 30. Yeah, I think it's a trend in our sport, Ellen. We're seeing these guys maturing a little later, playing a little longer as well because they surround themselves with a whole team now. They're physiotherapists, massage therapists, biokinetists, you name it. There's also an incentive to stay in the sport longer. There's a lot of money involved these days. Yeah. You only get one shot at it, so you've got to maximize it. I think it also says something about that group of players who've done a lot of the winning now oh, turning yeah. into their 30s, the big four, if you will. They've won uh, 45 of the last 50 Grand Slam tournaments. It's incredible. Thank you. Seats quickly, please. Beautiful look out the west side of Arthur Ashe Stadium at the skyline of Manhattan inside 23,000 plus watching the championship match of the U.S. Open. Rafael Nadal won the first set. We're on serve in the second. Here's Anderson. Kevin Anderson trying to do something that few have done. The big four, Nadal, Federer, Djokovic, and Murray, have won 45 of the last 50 Grand Slam tournament titles. Of course, Del Potro and Cilic and Wawrinka, all exceptions to that rule. Wawrinka with three Grand Slam titles. Rafael Nadal to ask for a chase review on that serve. Rightfully so. Surprised the linesman missed that last call. So pretty far out. So back to business though, if you're Anderson. And if you're the linesman. Yep. Forget about the last point, play the next. Fifth or sixth time he's ripped that backhand out the side of the court like that. There's not many players who can do that. Certainly not with that kind of pace. The trend continues in this second set. Anderson struggling to land his first serve, but when he does, he's winning the majority of the points. In fact, he's won all the points in this set when he's landed his first serve. I understand he's only in his second service game, but he's only winning half the points in this set when he's on his second serve. Well done, that one. And a service hold for Anderson. And we are at two games two apiece. Games so Nadal serving here. At two apiece.
it's that sliding serve down the middle again, Anderson. We'll ask for it to be looked at. Oh, he's got to start covering that more and force Nadal stay away from his favorite. That is plumb on the line. Chase review says good. First ace of the match for Nadal. Of course, Nadal has certainly ever lost a major final on one occasion after he's won the first set. That was in Australia back in 2012. Novak Djokovic, the man on the other side of the net that day. Otherwise, 12 and 1. He plays well with the lead. Definitely, son of a great player. And I was just having a look at his uh, second set score lines over the past fortnight, Alan. 6 2, 6 3, 6 3, 6 4, 6 2, 6 love. And once he gets going, very tough to reel in. Very quick service hold to love, and we are at 3-2 on serve in the second set, and it all has a one-set lead. What makes a guy a good front runner? Relentlessness. Yes. Never lo allows himself that mental lapse. Yep. Luke, I think it's pretty fair to say this guy might be one of the most relentless ever. He reminds me so much of like a Monica Sellis, Jimmy Connors, just absolutely never takes a heartbeat off. Emotionally, the focus, I mean, he just is in his routine, in his, in his like zone all the time, and he's able to kind of lock into it. And it's so remarkable because there's so many distractions in a, you know, huge stadium like this from the, you know, the noise and the crowd and the, but he's just locked in, and I just think, he puts so much pressure on the other side. The heaviness of the top spin ball, the way he retrieves, the way he attacks. It's tough for anybody. It, it, remember the French Open he won this year? Didn't drop a set. Closest set, I think, was 6-4. It's, it's amazing that he's, he's got the energy to be able to play like that all the time. Just loves the game so much. There are the score lines inside beautiful Arthur Ashe Stadium. Kevin Anderson looking to stay on serve with Rafael Nadal. Great all court tennis. Look at him. Exemplary when coming forward. This one all nine points. There's Nadal. Granted, he's coming in on big approaches, sometimes easy approaches, but he's still got to be able to finish off. In. Love to be 
once again Anderson paying the price for coming into that Nadal backhand the one-two combination the dipper followed by the ripper Christie enjoyed it a little dangerous spot here for Anderson Taking a little too long for Jake Garner's liking, a time violation for Anderson. When that gets called so much, it's how you respond to it, how you deal with it, if you let it distract you. Kevin's talked about developing a routine, yep. including those fist pumps and come ons that just helps him on the court, helps him stay focused and stay in his rhythm. So not letting it alter that routine is really important at this point. <laughs> now a couple of break points. Anderson has fended off four of six break opportunities that Nadal has had, but those two he has not have been very expensive. saved but still another one faced for Anderson call us somewhere Uncle Tony Very happy with the way things have gone thus far Tony Nadal talking about that this will be his last year on the road with Nadal Though I suspect if his presence is requested at certain events or at certain times, he would be more than willing. Nadal strikes. And a service break. And a four games to two lead in this second set. Nadal Patrols the net. So intelligent here. Tight. Make sure. Now that one's not coming back. Look how close he is to the net. Their foot almost touched it. So now again a chance to consolidate serve here to be at 5-2 in this second set. game and the outcome of oh, the set probably even the match if Anderson can break right back uh, you'll feel like it's uh, right back in it but you look up to the scoreboard and you see a 5-2 lead with the opponent and even though it's only one break psychologically it's a it's a big advantage well the other thing 
that Anderson surely knows or feels by now. Nadal has not even offered a break point to Kevin yet. Yep. He hasn't even gotten the game to that mark. Stan Smith. Slicing serve down the tee has been hard for Anderson to handle. Yep. Nadal's got him again. He is everywhere. I mean, that defense is ridiculous. Just covers the court so well. He just shrinks it for you. Doesn't matter where you hit it, he is there. Service break consolidated, and Rafael Nadal has a five games to two lead in this second set, having already won the first. Big deficit now for Kevin Anderson as his serve broken by Rafael Nadal, and the service break consolidated. Now he is at 2 5 in this second set. Very much in jeopardy of falling behind two sets to the world's number one player. I don't want to beat the point into the ground, but again, here in this set, Kevin Anderson's only landing 41% of his first serves in play. When he lands the first serve, he's won six of seven points, but he's only won four of ten on his second serve. That's one of the biggest serves in the game, so when that first serve isn't finding his mark, he's going to be in trouble. Are you seeing something that he's doing on these first serves that might be inconsistent in some way? Or yeah, just not hitting his target, so I don't see anything as far as technically is concerned. There's no wind down there really to deal with, so there's no excuse. Again, just a couple of inches long. Perhaps needs to take a bit of pace off the serve, and, you know. Add a bit more spin for control. And Alan, the dynamic of Nadal standing so far back, daring Anderson to go for an angle, daring Anderson to go for the line, because what Nadal do, does is basically wait for the ball to slow up a little bit, and that may make Anderson press a little bit more, do a little bit more with his fastball and miss it. Yeah, interesting. Roger Federer, average first serve speed between about 117 and 125, but it's so accurate. 
It does so much damage. In a place that's so hard to handle. Yep. Right, that's what Kevin's got to do now. He's got to take a little pace off. That angle's been so effective for him. And the win over Query and the win over Carreño Busta. That's got to be the biggest second serve of the match for either player. 120 miles an hour. So a service hold for 3-5. But now Rafael Nadal will serve for a two-set lead in this match. Not only has Anderson not broken Nadal's serve, but Nadal has not even given him a look at a break point in the match. I'm so important on this very first point that Anderson shifts over to his left. And doesn't give Nadal... That slider down the middle because Nadal's been really hurting him with that particular serve. on serve in the set. It's again so good at opening up the court. No panic here. around the side of the ball create the angle always moving through it on contact Three, second set to Rafael Nadal. He's one set away from a U.S. Open championship. Oh, once again, so impressive from Rafa. I don't know that you can find anything about this match that he's done wrong. Let's take a look at his numbers on the left side of the screen there. First serves in play, outstanding. When that first serve goes in, so difficult to win points off of him. In fact, he's only lost three points on serve that entire set. Break points one, one and two. Shuts Anderson out. Anderson yet to see a break point in this match. And net points at one, perfect. Five of five. So... As far as Nadal is concerned, it's copy and paste from set number one. And he'd love to do just the same as far as set number three is concerned. It's the first serves in play for Anderson, a lowly yeah. 36. That really has been his uh, Achilles heel today. Especially when you compare it to the number below that. 88% of points won on his first serve. So... It's uh, it's all on Nadal's side of the net right now. 
for Kevin Anderson. Can he find some answers? Or is the trophy ceremony one set away in this year's final Grand Slam? Both players have left the court. So it'll be a moment before we resume with this third set. Kind of feel the energy picking up in the house down there, Luke? You know, I think everyone is just enjoying the atmosphere. They are enjoying the quality of play. It's Nadal... The Dallas show. I mean, he's been here on this stage so many different times. And to me, it's Anderson not getting enough looks on the return of serve, not reaching out and cutting off that serve to his backhand, that lefty slider, the one that bends. So to me, moving forward, it has got to be Kevin Anderson just unleashing the beast on the return of serve side. If he gets a second serve, I say throw some saber in there. Drive the ball, come in, use his side. Mm -hmm. You've got to you've got to leave everything on the court, empty out any tactic, the entire playbook right now. Can Kevin Anderson find some answers? World number one Rafael Nadal has had them all in this U.S. Open men's final so far. He's up two sets to love and one set away from a third U.S. Open crown. See if Anderson is able to loosen up with that first serve a little bit, find the mark a little more, create a difference in this set. That has been missing so far in this match. important service game for Kevin Anderson when you consider that through six matches working his way to this U.S. Open final his serve had only been broken five times it's already been broken three times tonight yep and one stage going 55 service games in a row unbroken <laughs> it's incredible. Again, that first shot. Once he gets it to Anderson's four and gets him moving, he can do whatever he likes. He's one of the best in the business at dealing with short balls, as Nadal. Always makes you pay. <laughs> Kevin Anderson through the tournament coming into tonight's final had landed 66% of his first serves. He's off that mark by 12 percentage points and the opponent is now the number one player in the world. It's been an expensive 12%. Yeah, and if anything, if you're hoping to get the W, you want those numbers to be slightly elevated in the final.
43. That was there for him. back in this Juice. service game. Illinois tennis coach, of course, Kevin, former Juice. player at the University of Illinois. Yeah, Brad Dancer. Kevin played under him there. really found his range on that return of serve now especially the second one he's hitting it within a foot of the line immediately changing the dynamic of the point right there he's rocking Anderson backward so an opportunity for an early service break to start this third set Service break. Rafael Nadal gets the early advantage in set number three. And that was not what Kevin Anderson and his uh, supporters wanted to see. Definitely not Nadal. And again, Luke, maybe a, a bit of trivia. And it does pertain to the U.S. Open because Nadal has only ever lost one match at a major after being two sets to love up. He's 169 and one. his wife a former champion here look at him Flavia Panetta mm -hmm. she won and retired right yes she just walked off the stage and best, adios best way to do it go out holding the big trophy and with the big check Times about how Nadal has not opened a break point opportunity up yet for Kevin Anderson in this match through the course of the tournament. So the sixth match is coming into tonight. He'd only faced 25 break points. And remember, he lost three sets along the way. He saved 17. Check that 18 of those 25. Stingy.
Nadal talked about after dropping the first set to Juan Martin Del Potro in the semifinal that after making some adjustments really didn't feel like he made many mistakes after that hit good winners served well um, in fact said served really well felt he played a great match after that first set was very happy the way he played he's carried that over to this match tonight he served well defended well hard to find any flaws with his performance so far. I'm surprised that challenging that. Think it was that close? You yeah, are. That was close. I mean, I'm right on that line. Yeah. If you have a chance to get the 30 all, get down two sets of love and a break. I mean, you can't take. Gotta ask the question. Yep. Okay. Service hold the doll. By the way, Hawkeye says the challenge would not have been successful. The ball was out. So the consolidated service break gives Nadal a two to love lead in this third set with a two sets to love advantage in the match. And the train is rolling. But uh, so it wasn't very loud. That's why Anderson's looking over that end of the court. Thought he heard something. It was just long. Good call in the end. attacked that shot Alan he hasn't waited for the ball to come to him you can see how he's moving through it even on a drop shot you can take time away from your opponent that he's got that return back and play yeah it just shows you how hard you have to work for every point and it wears you out physically and mentally landed that one in remember he's missed a few of those the serve that was so effective for him in the last couple of rounds to get through to this final. And the body serve to close out a service hold. Haven't seen many of those 40-15 opportunities for Anderson. And he's down a break and a couple of sets. You know Kevin Anderson well, Robbie. You know he's not going to be happy just to have been here. But the fact that he is here is going to do worlds for his ranking and uh, perhaps for his self-confidence going forward into these Grand Slams. Of course, it's a massive learning experience, obviously, both ways. Whether you win or lose, ranking will go to run around 15. 
in the world if he's on the losing end. That's a big jump from where he was at the start of the year. His ranking dropped as low as 80. He was playing qualifying in Rome this year. The ranking of around 79, so he's got it back. And he's got it back quickly. Of course, has been a top tenner. Yep. But he's got a big deficit against the top player to try and dig out of now. Thank you. Please take any seat for now. Ready for play. Rafael Nadal in his fourth U.S. Open Thank final. Looking to see if he can win his third championship here. He's up two sets and a service break on Kevin Anderson. In a match that is just about to hit the two-hour mark in length. Thank you. You're ready for play. Any seat for now? Players are waiting. Yeah, Nadal's got him again. He's not only pulling him and pushing him from left to right, then he's forcing him to come forward. And again, some players just getting to that ball and trying to get it back in play might be enough, but not against Nadal. he's done a good job of is continually turning Anderson back on himself he's a big guy as Kevin so he's got a large turning circle he's forehand backhand forehand backhand 40 that too but on that previous point going back behind him twice so you hit to the backhand as Kevin recovers you go back to the backhand ah, okay so he's mixed up both well He's chosen the right time when to move him and precisely the right moment when to go behind the big guy. That is the first double fault of the match for Nadal. two-thirds of his first serves in play that is the exact percentage he has played to throughout the tournament Kevin has uh, looked down at his his middle finger. It's on his right hand, and I don't know where that came from. But he's got a towel. He's got two towels in the back here. One is to take away. I don't know if it's bleeding or just an annoyance.
3-1. Rafael Nadal in this third set. And now three games away from a U.S. Open championship. Download the U.S. Open app if you'd like to dig into some of the match highlights, player news, maybe some of today's celebrity sightings. It's available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. And we have had a number of celebrity sightings today. Chair umpire asking to see if he's bleeding or not, because if he is, that uh, probably needs to get taken care of. I mean, it's just a little bit. I can do it on the changeover. Can you ask for the changeover? On his index finger, from what I can tell from this vantage point. Okay. And we just heard the conversation with the um chair umpire, Jake Garner, asked if he could take care of it on the changeover. So Anderson serving, down two sets and a break. Just imagine what the experience is like to be in your first Grand Slam final in the world's largest tennis stadium and walk out across the net from the number one player in the world. By the way, who you've never beaten in four previous tries. I'm pretty sure Kevin knew it was a big ask. Oh, yeah. But... Reality is, he was also going to give his best. Beautifully done. Might have been the best shot he's hit all match down the line like that. Service hold for Anderson. Nadal leads three games to two, third set, and by two sets to one. ATP physio Clay Snipeman just doing a little bit of running repairs here for Kevin. Tournament referee there as well. Brian early. So maybe just trying to reach for a shot or something. Caught his knuckle on the the hard court surface. That'd be just speculation on my part. if they're able to get it done in the changeover or any extended medical time has to be allotted. Okay, a little bit of uh, talc powder just to dry it out. look at the end of the repair effort for Kevin Anderson on that uh, left index finger uh, the tournament referee you might have heard say to the chair umpire that uh, he thought he was good to go so Anderson trailing by two sets and a break to world number one Rafael Nadal who serves here at 3-2 in the third Place has been hopping for the last two weeks. This USDA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center. Record crowds coming through. It's been a fun fortnight.
Kentucky Junior. It's a five-set match. If he can find a way back into this set, you're in, you know you're not going to wear Nadal out. He of endless energy. Yep. But you've got to beat him. Still a, a long way to go. So I think only the second time in this match, Kevin's won the first point on the Nadal serve. their accounts this afternoon just really hurting Anderson 36 in total the dull a measly 10 keeping it tighter than the tax man's purse been outstanding in the forecourt perfect in that department too 14 for 14 you say if it doesn't get enough credit for how good they are about these two being the top two in the tournament in return of first serve win percentage receiving points one in this match so heavily outweigh for Nadal Anderson has won 56 receiving points in the match Nadal 97 4-2 two. Rafael Nadal. Nadal beats four games to two. Good set. Dad, and of course, you're sitting just behind Carlos Moya, Sebastian, and brother Tony. Of course, uh, plenty of sporting pedigree in the Nadal genes. Big sporting pedigree in the house, Tiger Woods. Anderson was pumping the fist, but I was holding my breath because we saw Nadal bend a couple of those around earlier in the match and land him in by the end line. Anderson is serving at the end nearest his coaching box, and you might have heard someone saying to him there come on big rally big rally big rally encouragement perfectly allowed
Once again, steady defense of the Nadal backhand, clearly evident. Still standing all the way back by the wall to try and take that first serve in. Doesn't move up, up much for the second, does he? Not at all. We'll see in the service motion. Got it. Again, that second serve of Anderson's that Nadal is winning all the points off of. Kevin's first serve in percentage has climbed way up in this set, 73% in this third. And he's winning 81% of the points on that serve, but only one of six point wins on his second serve. It's been a story of the match. Because when you think about it, Anderson has won 57% of the points on his second serve through the course of the match. Tonight, only 35%. He trails by two sets and a break. The focus, the strength of a champion. Frustration there of the man trying to beat him. Rafa hasn't offered many openings tonight, has he, Luke? I'll tell you, like I said, the first set he had that Anderson had that one little look at 1530, just couldn't do anything that transition back in. And then the serve really, you've been pointing it out. The first serve percentage, he needed that cannon. He needs that cannon. And you see, finally in the third set, he's getting some easy outs. And when they're talking to him about Time. the big ground strokes, that's a directive. Listen, you've got to swing out and go big now. Yeah. Thank you, six, please. Taking his seat for now, ready for play. Former site of the New York World's Fair. Now a city park. The USTA Billy Jean King National Tennis Center, a part of that city park. This is a public park for all but two weeks of the year. The two weeks that the U.S. Open is here. Rafael Nadal up two sets and a break, serving here at 4 3 in the third. Kevin's ground strokes is the spin control. He hasn't got that arc right. We've seen him miss long when he's uh, up the court. And then there, not getting enough height when he's deep in the court. Just hasn't got that quite right.
was pressing a little too much there. That's what Adele makes you do because he moves so well. You feel like you have to hit it a little bit closer to the line. And that's when you make an unforced error. And there's been 39 of those bad boys for Kevin. Three, Nadal, and he is one game away from a U.S. Open Nadal championship. So a new stick to see if he can get a service break here and wrap it up. Nadal, second all-time in Grand Slam titles, 15, looking for his 16th. Of course, he missed this U.S. Open a couple times in the last uh, five years with injuries. The ever meticulous placement of the drink bottles. matched by the ever meticulous placement of his shots in this championship match. Just relentless. Nine bruising blows from Rafa. Ninth ace of the match for Anderson, second of this set. Could use a couple of more of those to keep playing. Nadal was asked after his semifinal win, after some of the difficulties that he's had, challenges with his uh, health and so on over the years, what it would mean to him to win a couple of slams this year. And he said, more than winning the slams is to be happy and healthy. He said, uh, if I'm happy and I'm healthy and I feel competitive in most of the weeks I'm playing, then I'm good. And that's what's happened this year. Yep. And I think we can say exactly the same about our two women finalists. Both of them having to come back from injury at the start of the year. A really deep appreciation for their sport. Not much to smile about in the Anderson box. But he tries to hold serve here. And does. 5-4. And after the changeover, Rafael Nadal will serve for the U.S. Open title. Building to the moment. That's pretty much what we've seen from the world number one. His opening set of this opening match of this tournament was really shaky. But it's fair to say he has played his best tennis uh, in the second week of the tournament and he has played just an amazing match in this one tonight he certainly has he's uh, given Anderson very little to feed off of experiences decision making on the court has been very good he
think the one thing that will disappoint Kevin is that he's made just too many unforced errors, been pressing too much. And the fact that the first serve in sets one and two, that first serve percentage in particular was well below par. And didn't return well. I mean, again, his back's against the wall here, but never really got a handle on that left-handed serve from Nadal. Yeah, not picking up on that slider. It's taken him a while to finally shift over, Luke. The huge crowd in Arthur Ashe Stadium senses the moment is at hand as Rafael Nadal serves for the match and the U.S. Open title. Thank you. Please. supporting him but right now you're aggravating him Hit it long. Thirty fifteen. Two points away. <laughs> I don't know what that was about, but whatever it was. Carlos keep an Uncle Tony in check and that's not easy to do. Yeah. Tough to do. Thank you. Thank you. Ah. 
And we come to match point. Thank you. Fight, please. Thank you. I'm not too sure how many times Anderson has been to deuce on an adult serve, but it's not many. It could even be the first if memory serves. They have been few and far between. Yeah. He's not gotten to a break point yet. Mm -hmm. And a match point again. Rafael Nadal is a U.S. Open champion for a third time. Six, 